compute volumes of revolution using cylindrical shells and usually the integrals tend to be easier only because we're not squaring anything. However, sometimes the pictures get a little ugly. What I want to do is go through the process for revolving an area about a horizontal line which is not the y-axis and it happens to be uh, the problem from page 434 number 23D. When we're going about a horizontal line we're going to use this formula. The volume equals the integral from A to B where A to B are the y values of just the area that we're integrating not all the way to the axis. In our case it's 0 to 1. And then it's 2 pi times the shell radius times the shell height times dy. Now how do you get the shell radius and the shell height? Well we create our typical shell by taking a slice, a horizontal slice, parallel to the axis of revolution and spinning it all the way around to make a cylinder. So I'll kind of try and show that without messing my picture up too much. Okay, this little slice will give us the shell radius and the shell height. To get the shell radius we need to measure the distance from the axis of revolution out to our line. And the way you do that is simple. You do y minus whatever the line is. In our case it's negative two-fifths. So our shell radius is y minus negative two-fifths which is y plus two-fifths. All you do is y minus whatever the line is. If the line is above the x the x-axis it'll be y minus something. If the line is below the x-axis it'll be y plus something. We're just measuring this distance which is y plus two-fifths. To get the shell height which is actually a width since our cylinders turned sideways we simply do the right hand boundary minus the left hand boundary. In this case we're lucky the left hand boundary is x equals zero. So our right hand boundary is the function which happens to be 12 times y squared minus y cubed. There, there is no left hand boundary other than x equals zero so it's just minus zero here. So we have our shell height, excuse me, we have our shell radius, we have our shell height and we're ready to do the integral. I'm not saying it's going to look pretty but it is going to be doable. V equals the integral from zero to one 2 pi times y plus 2 fifths times 12 y squared minus y cubed. Now we can take 24 pi out in front and it gives us a little easier integral to deal with. We are going to have to use one of my favorite F words, FOIL, to simplify this and then it will just be a power rule. So let's do that real quick. 24 pi, integral from 0 to 1, y cubed, minus y to the fourth, plus 2 fifths y squared, minus 2 fifths y cubed, dy. Ah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do my power rule here with the antiderivative. y to the fourth over four minus y to the fifth over five plus two y cubed over fifteen minus two y to the fourth over twenty. And we're doing that from zero to one. When we plug in zero, this stuff all goes away. So let's just plug in a one and get it over with. 
24 pi times 1 fourth minus 1 fifth plus 2 over 15 minus 2 over 20 which is 1 tenth. And with a little work with our fractions, we're going to end up with 3 over 60 here, plus 2 over 60 here, which is 5 over 60, which is 1 twelfth. 24 pi times 1 twelfth, believe it or not, is 2 pi. And yes, you can check the back of your book and you will also see that answer.